Greetings all. So today I have been asked to make a simple and quick video on the overall process of using Adobe Premiere. Um, I'm using Creative Cloud's most recent update. You might be using something similar, but the truth is the program's not going to change too much. So no matter what you're actually using, uh, what version, the, this workflow is going to work for you. Uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up Premiere. Now I'm using Spotlight. That's this little magnifying glass in the upper left hand corner on a Mac. On a PC you can use your uh, search function and find it as well. So Premiere, once I start typing the letters it pops up so all I have to do is hit return. Now through this loading screen I just want to talk about the basic uh, routine that we're going to go through. We need to capture or collect video. Um, I want to explain how the UI works of the system that's the user interface. And then I want to show you how to import that video, import audio into the program, and then select the important shots, uh, add those shots to a timeline, and then kind of reorganize them, edit them a little bit. Uh, we'll bring some audio into the timeline as well. We'll play with some effects, and then we're going to export it. This whole thing should take about 20 minutes or so. So let's get into this project a little bit. The first thing that we need to do is use our Premiere Start page to either open a project or go to a new project. Since this is going to be a brand new project, I want to start to establish some organization things. Uh, you'll notice that when I hit new project, I get this panel that looks kind of complicated. There's a lot of stuff going on here. What I want to do is I want to choose where I collect all of the data for this project. I often think of Premiere projects like recipes and then all of the content that goes into that recipe as ingredients. And so what I tend to do is I will title this recipe. This is going to be Simple Premiere. By the way, I'm using something called Mouse Pose. This is an application that allows me to track my mouse cursor movements. So that's why you see this and then you'll see these different modifiers as I use them. So you can kind of see what I'm doing here. So the location of this data by default is going to go to the Premiere Pro folder. But I like to always send my resources to the same location, which is going to be my desktop. So I'll go browse. And then in the sidebar on a Mac, you can choose desktop. It might be in a similar location. On a PC, it's the same thing. Your desktop will work and function the same way. So we'll hit choose. Cool. And now you'll see that the location of all of these assets, or the, the recipe, is going to be on my desktop. And then the name of that recipe is Simple Premiere. Now, some of this other stuff, you don't really need to mess with right now. We are going to be using HD video, so that's what HDV stands for. But then the audio and video stuff. This is a basics level introduction, so we're going to be skipping some of the content. All right, so I hit OK and stuff happens. So again, we get back to that workflow. I've already went through and grabbed some video. And um, that workflow, now that we're inside our program, I'm going to go ahead and minimize it up here with this little bar, uh, bar button. that will throw that down into the dock. So that's where it is right now. So the resources that I went out and collected were Creative Commons resources. I've got two videos here. There's a website here called videos.pexels.com and you can go through and just download a bunch of videos. It's pretty sweet. So if I wanted airplanes, I would just come over here and download it. And so free for personal computer use, no attribution required. So you can kind of see about these licenses if you don't want to go out and collect, if you just want to learn how to do stuff. In fact, I'm going to be putting a link to all of the resources in this folder uh, so that you can come to this website, you can also get to where I'm going to grab the Creative Commons music. So I'm going to be pulling in music from Adriana Kirkle. I'm not sure if I'm saying your last name correctly, Adriana, so I apologize if I'm not. But yeah, again, we just use this content as educational purposes for the Creative Commons community. But of course, you could also use image capture or any kind of media uploader to grab your content from your iPhone, from your Android device, from your super fancy pants digital SLR camera, or your old school camcorder. Any video content and audio content is going to be applicable here. So in this case, I have some trees. I've just hit spacebar so I can do a preview of this. I have my type. 
just somebody typing, that is not me. And then finally I have the music. Turn it up here. So this is an audio bed, it's just something to kind of have some sort of atmosphere, it's a little bit brooding, I kind of like that. So, and I'm not necessarily worried about the time on any of this stuff, but that's my content. And the first step in any project is to kind of have an idea, bring it together, and get it into your computer. Then we have to bring it into the software. So I'm going to head on back down to Premiere. Hit that button again, and that'll bring that back up so we can see what's going on here. Now, I want to introduce the uh, user interface a bit, because this is a relatively complicated system of buttons and windows that all kind of work with one another. So the the thing to know about this interface is that we have these different boxes. Now if I click on these boxes you'll notice that this blue line, it might be a different color for you, but this blue line surrounds that box and that lets me know which process or which area of the program that I'm addressing. So right here it says import media to start. So I'm gonna start right here and then it tells me to drop media here. This is our timeline. This is our project. Now our process is going to be importing next and then we're going to select important shots up here in the source. We'll take those selected shots and we'll send them back down to the timeline and then we see all of that information in our program. This is where our final media starts to come together. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to come down here and I can import a couple different ways. There's buttons, but I like just the simple double click. So I tap tap and that opens up my finder window. Now I need to go to where that folder is. I recommend that you download this folder. I'll have it as a zip file. Throw it on your desktop and then navigate to your desktop and you can bring in this stuff. Now we don't want to bring in these two web blocks. These are uh, URLs that take you to the two websites where I got the media so you can explore that more. What I'm doing here is I've clicked on the first one and I've pressed command on the mp4 files. Now you'll notice mp3 and mp4 these are something known as codec or compression decompression data where we take the information and we put it together in a way that's kind of a little smaller for computers to be able to handle. You've heard of mp3s, uh, mp4s are the same thing but now it has a video component to it. So you'll notice here that when I click on these things I then add command on a Mac, control on a PC, and I can select multiple things simultaneously. So I've got my audio and my two video files coming in. And then I come down here and I click import. And now the program brings those in. So again, this is nothing more than a recipe. These are the ingredients of my recipe, but they're raw yet. So I need to see what they look like and then go ahead and start to bring them in. Now I, I've got this information set so that all of the video is the same size and the same frame rate. So I don't have to worry about size or frame rate. Again, if you're interested in that stuff, I suggest Googling around a little bit because I want to keep this somewhat simple. So first things first, I'm going to double click on any one of these things and you'll see that when I do that, it's going to show up in my source. So if I double click on the audio, I see what looks like a seismograph. You know, I see a, a left and a right next to it. This is just the audio signal coming in. It's been digitally parsed out. We call these wave envelopes. And so if I hit spacebar, I'll start to hear the audio. And then down here I'm starting to see its reaction. This is something called an audio meter. Or it shows us our levels of the audio. Um, it's showing us an, an, an algorithmic formula called decibels. Again, this is just the amount of sound and power behind that sound on a logarithmic scale. I'm not going to go too deep into that, but that's also what we're seeing here. We don't want these audio, whenever we're playing with audio, to get too loud. So we're going to, later on in this video, show you how to turn audio up and down. Alright, so now what we see in the source over here is I have this little playhead. I can click, pick it up, move it around. This is called scrubbing. I'm just clicking and holding and moving around. You'll see that this little blue line is following this playhead pretty closely. I'm going to double click on the trees, and then the trees are going to show up. Same thing, I can move this playhead up and down, and it kind of gives me the content I want. I'm going to make a very simple video where the video is going to start with the person typing, and then it's going to go to the person in the forest. Kind of like this, and then it'll come back to the typing, 
and then it will finish up with the person looking into the trees. And then it will uh, be done. That's going to be it. It's going to be very, very simple. The idea here in this very simple Premiere tutorial is to show how to take two different pieces of video and put them together. The concept is somebody thinking about being in the woods while being at work. Okay, so to get things started, what I need to do, I'm going to focus on collecting the, the first shot that I want to get. And so that is starting here in the forest, so it's kind of low to the ground. And what I want to do is I want to go ahead and make an in point and an out point for this shot. So I have buttons, mark in, mark out, and you'll notice that there's some parentheses behind them that mark in with an uh, uppercase I and a mark out with an uppercase O next to it. So I can go ahead and say that this is my in shot. Now I want you to notice I've just now created this light a gray bar right above my whole entire timeline. It's because I don't have an out shot, so it's considering that whole thing to be selected. So I'm just going to come over here just a little bit, something like this, and I'm going to make an out point. And this time I'm going to go ahead and click on this. And now notice how this in point and out point are two different distinct moments in time. And I'm basically allowing for myself to get just the part of the shot that I want. So you have your entire raw recording and then you're going to take a clip out of that whole raw recording. And so this is a clip from the recording. So now what I'm going to do is I simply pick this video up and I drag it and I drop it. And I can go ahead and just drag and drop right here into this drop media to the create sequence. Once again, click and hold, start to drag. You'll notice how my cursor turns into a little hand that's a, like grabbing and holding on to something. And now it's got a little plus next to it. When I let go, it's instantly given me a timeline. Now let's talk about this timeline in terms of user, user interface. We again have a playhead. And that playhead, I can go left and right. I can zoom in and out on this timeline by hitting plus and minus on my computer. And I can see the amount of time that I've actually grabbed. So these are just, a, just beyond a second worth of information here. And I'm looking at 23 frames per second, so about 24 frames per second. And so I'm looking at roughly 24 frames plus a couple extra after there. So I can see as I scroll through that this is so zoomed in that I'm actually looking at each individual frame of this. Again, just like when I was up here and I hit spacebar, when I'm down here, notice how I've just clicked that blue box to move it down on my timeline. When I hit spacebar here, it starts and stops again. So I'm going to grab this little blue playhead right here, click and hold, drag it back, hit spacebar again. So I can actually see up here in my program what the whole thing is going to look like. Sweet. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag this over. So we see here that as I drag it around, it gets me right to a very specific point where there's now no more content. I want to go ahead and leave my cursor right there. So now I'm going to come back to typing, and let's just press spacebar up here. So this is a significant amount of time. You can see over here that this is going to be 2 minutes and 26 seconds of typing. I'm going to scrub through, see if there's anything interesting going on at all. Boy, there's not much interesting going on with this, which is absolutely fine. I mean, the, the idea of the concept of the piece is somebody's typing and starts to think about the woods. So I'm going to again do that in and out point. This time I'm going to use the shortcut I. And it's somewhat arbitrary. Spacebar. Spacebar again to stop it, and then hit O. And now again, drag and drop. All right, so notice what's going on here. In that first file, we have audio. And in the second file, we don't have audio. Let's go ahead and explore what that means. I'm going to zoom in down here to the timeline. So we see here that there are different video tracks and different audio tracks, and they're separated by this line right here. Now in this case, we're not going to mess with audio too much. That's from the original video. So here what we're seeing is all of the audio information. And if I scroll, I can actually see but there is some audio that's coming in from like the, the subtle um, audio of being in the woods. But there is no audio coming in on the audio track. I just want you to notice here, when I scroll up and down, I get more or less information on that specific track.
So be aware that that is something. But when I scroll up and down here, I'm actually scrolling up and down through the number of tracks. So that means where your cursor is is going to change what happens when you scroll. All right, fantastic. So we're not going to worry too much about the audio right now. I just hit spacebar. This is feeling pretty good. Sweet. So my idea is to start with the person in the office and then start thinking about the trees. Cut back to the office and cut back to the trees and look up. So I need to rearrange something or reorganize. Now this is very easy. Uh, there are a bunch of tools here, but we're going to just mess with the move tool for right now. This move tool allows me to pick up certain content and move them around. So I'm just going to go ahead and pick this up and literally drag it straight up and then over. Take this, drag it all the way back so it's at the beginning of the play and see how it butts up against that. I don't want to go any further. Great, so now when I start, it always starts the video. Great. Now I can take this and drag it right here and notice how it kind of snaps. This snapping has to do with this magnet right here. And when that's on, that means that it wants to kind of snap the video. Otherwise, you get these things called gap scenes, where there's a little bit of black that drops out there. We don't want that. So snapping allows you to try to eliminate that a little bit. But I want to show you something else. I drag this up and then start to move it back. Notice how I now have two video tracks. This acts like a stacking of uh, different condiments on a cracker, if you will. So if I click on this point, I can see that this is my cracker, my baseline. And then I have the next thing on top of it. Let's say it's a cucumber. Right? And then it goes back to the cracker again, because that's the only spot where there is new content. So it's like looking down at a stack of composited information. Sweet. So I can now move this up and down the timeline, and it's going to play where I want it to. So I'm going to come back here, and, and there's all sorts of different conversations about editing. You can edit with your gut. I think right around here is when something should happen. And this is arbitrary, so I'm just going to scoot this over here. And at this point in time, I think I want to add the next bit of information. So I'm going to go ahead and come back to my trees. We see that that in and that out point are already there. I want to come up here so it's slightly different. So we can see where this tree is here. I'm going to move that. So it's at the bottom of the frame. Okay. And I'm going to make another in and out point here for this. Something like that. And once again, I'm going to drag it down and out, and we'll see that it's trying to move the audio to a different thing. We can kind of move the audio around. I'm going to keep all of the audio right now that I'm not going to use on audio track one. So again, we have him typing. He's thinking about the woods. He goes back to typing. He's like, oh, those woods are pretty cool. I think I want to, I think I want to be in those woods. All right, so he's looking up. And let's do one more little bit of typing. And this time what I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab too much content so I can show you how to trim some stuff. So we see here, I'm just scrolling in and out. I, I have just way too much content here. So I'm going to play this back. It's thinking about the words. So that's a bit fast. See if I can elongate that a little bit. No, yeah, that's fine. All right, right about there is where I think we should have the next kind of all the way up to the woods. So let me show you what's going on here. I'm going to zoom into this. We have the ability to trim what's known as the tail of our clip or the top of our clip. Notice what that arrow is doing. If I have it on this side, I'm going to be pulling things out. If I have it on this side, I'm going to be pulling things back. Or I can come to the tail, click and hold, and notice how it turns red when I do that, and I can drag this in. Now as I do that, notice what happens to the program. There's nothing really going on because there's nothing that I'm going back between. It's like black space. But that allowed me to trim to that playhead, so I can use that as kind of my guide. I'm going to hit the backslash key. This is a shortcut. You don't have to hit it. You can always hit plus and minus. But the backslash key will always fit your content to your timeline. And now I'm going to press the home key on a PC or function back key on a Mac. And that sends me to the beginning of my timeline. And I hit spacebar. 
See that? See that? Come back. So that's the fast part. I want to slow that down just a little bit. Cool. So that's my content. It's looking really good right now for the most part. Now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and use my move and kind of give more space right here. So I'm just going to scoot this over a touch. All right, so something like this, because I'm kind of trying to give it intervals that are, I don't know, roughly even here. I'm going to add that last little bit of tree content. Take this, move it over. I can grab this little groovy grabber right in the middle, and that way I can get the same amount of time here for the trees if I wanted to. It doesn't really matter. I'll go and drag this down again. Something like that. And you'll notice that I'm using my playhead to kind of tell me where I want to drop information because the new content tends to snap to the playhead. All right, and that's the, the, the end. So let's see my glorious, beautiful production here. Yay! Yeah, I'd want to be in the woods too. Okay, so at this point, that's the basic stuff. We've reorganized and we've trimmed using the content that we want. We've played with two different video tracks and we've added two different kinds of media. And it just so happened that I kept the typing on one track and the trees on another track. It's not a bad way to do it. I can also, if I've got a lot of screen real estate, as I zoom here, I can start to see what that content looks like. If I don't have much screen real estate, meaning I don't have a very big monitor, then I can just look at what it's called. And this is why you want to go through and name your content pretty closely. All right, so the next thing we need to do is we need to bring the audio in. And so there is some audio. I can hear this like background noise, if you will. So I'm just going to zoom in here one more time. We can see that we have some options here. I can lock this, so that means I wouldn't edit or move the audio at all. When I lock it, it gets this little kind of pin striking. I can also mute it, so that means that I won't hear any of the content on that layer. And sure enough, I don't hear anything now. So that's kind of fantastic. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back in and just add the Adriana uh, track. And again, I just drag and drop it. And this time I'm going to drag and drop it to the second uh, audio track here. So if I come back here, it gives it this kind of ominous feeling. Fantastic. So that's kind of unedited. I, I think maybe because if you notice here, she's got it kind of looping. I want to come in here just sample, sample this a little bit so we don't have any loops. Let's go right about here. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So I'll come back here and I'm going to make an endpoint. Zoom in here a little bit. So we can see this is called the release of a wave, and this is the attack of a wave. And I usually want to get it at this little gap where there's not much information going into space at that point. So I'm going to make an eye right here. Sweet. And because I've got that endpoint, I don't necessarily need to make an out point. I can go ahead and drag this content. Um, down to my playhead. Now, look closely here. I've got video and then a little audio waveform. And it tells me that I can just drag the audio over. So I use that button when I just want to grab one or the other. In fact, I'll just show you real quickly. For the trees, I have both options here. Cool. So I'm going to grab the audio and I'm going to butt it right against the front and then. Come on back to the beginning. Again, I pressed function left arrow. You can also press home. And so you'll see that the audio keeps going. If I backslash, you have a ton of audio. So we're going to cut it. Um, and I'm going to use the razor for that. I'm going to zoom in using just panning and pinching on my trackpad. I'm going to come back here so that it gets to the end. And I don't mind that it the audio keeps going just a little bit. Maybe maybe a couple, couple seconds beyond. But I do want to cut it here. So I want to actually strike it using 
a razor tool. So I'm going to razor by uh, clicking on the razor tool and coming down here and just hitting right where that play head is. And now what that's done is it's created two different moments on that same uh, continuous track. So I can now select each one independently. If I want to get rid of something, I simply hit the backspace key on the PC or delete on the Mac, and that will get rid of the content. Hit function again, let's listen to it. It's pretty good. We can see that the levels are nice. We don't have anything getting too loud here. Cool. Okay, let's just scroll down a little bit so we can see our audio. We do have the ability to play with this, I can turn this up and down at will. And I want it to be just a little quieter. Even quieter still. I'm grabbing this line and just dragging it down to kind of attenuate it. Just want it to feel like a little audio bit. Fantastic. All right, so that's adding the audio. If I wanted to, I could even fade it out. And what I can do for that, I'm just going to zoom in here. Um, this is a bit complicated, but uh, only slightly. As I move my uh, cursor across this line that I've been using to drag up and down for audio volume, I can press and hold Alt on a PC, or, um, I'm sorry, Command on a Mac, or Control on a PC, and I'll make what's known as a keyframe. And then I can make another little keyframe here. So these two keyframes are now in relation to each other. So I can grab this and turn it really loud or turn it way, way down, which is what I want it to do. I want it to be very, very quiet there towards the end. So as I zoom out here, we can listen to it. See how it kind of faded? Now if I want that fade to last a little bit longer, I can just drag it over. There you go. So that's a simple audio fade, and I could do the same thing at the beginning if I wanted to. Command click, command click, and just kind of slowly build up the audio. I'm just moving it over here. Cool. So that's audio. I've adjusted the uh, amount of audio, it's called attenuating the audio, and I've also faded the audio at the beginning at the end. The next thing we could probably do is we could fade the video at the very end. So for that, it takes me to effects. So let's go ahead and look at effects. Effects aren't as easy as you would think. Like in Photoshop or some of these other applications, there's an actual effect menu. But inside Premiere, there's an effect panel. And in fact, this is more aligned to what you'll see in After Effects and also uh, the Appearance panel inside Illustrator if you're used to coming into some uh, to the other Adobe programs. So Effects sits right here underneath your source. Now, in fact, this has a lot of different panels on it. Uh, there's more that can be shown. We have these two little double chevrons here, and that's just indicating the other options that we have. When I click on it, it tells me that I can go to Project. As well as I can go to markers, which are different ways to mark up your content, but I can go to effects. And now I have honestly too many options to choose from. We know that we're dealing with video transitions, and I know what it's called. It's called dip to black, but if I click on this thing called a disclosure triangle here, I can scroll down. There's so many different options. We are in the dissolves, and then here's all of your dissolve options. So this is literally a Pandora's box. There's tons of stuff to play with and lots of different confusing things that you'll see and need to edit. So if you're keeping this simple, all we're doing right now is messing with drag and drop effects. So I have dip to black here. Another way to find effects, once you know what they're called, is to use this little search bar. So I click on this and type dip, and then it immediately will take me to anything that says dip to black, dip to white. So here's the effect. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of choose where I want it to do, where I want it to go. I want it to happen right here at the trees. And honestly, maybe instead of dip to black, dip to white makes more sense. So let's go ahead and choose dip to white and drag and drop it. We picked it up. I'm dragging and dropping it right on the end of this media here. And we can see it right here. It says dip to white. So let's go ahead and play that through and see what that looks like.
it still dips <laughs> it still dips to black because there's there's nothing for it to go to if you wanted to keep it white you could add a white fill but that's not easy so we're going to go ahead and just let that dip to black and you can replace a transition just by simply dragging and dropping and putting it right over there so let's watch it now Honestly, that's fine. It's better. It's more clean. Sweet. So that's effects. And now if I wanted to play with colors and effects, what I would do is get it one more step. We have one more panel, which is kind of confusing. It's effects controls. I'm going to change these trees so that they're a little bit more saturated each time we think about them. All right, so we're going to click on this first one. It's very important that for effects that we move our playhead right over the thing that we want to adjust. Then come back over here to effects. And in this case, we have to think about effects and effects controls. So one more time, we have other menus underneath our other options here. And you can see that there's a bunch of different things. But effects controls effectively tells us what we're looking at and gives us the ability to adjust those things. So I'm going to come here to color correction and I have some options. Color balance is specifically what I'm looking for. So I'm going to drag that on top of each one of these clips. All right. You'll notice how this yellow bar, red bar, and sometimes you'll see a green bar. This is the computer's telling you that most likely it won't be able to play at real time. It's going to do its best here at yellow. At red, it's pretty sure it's going to have dropped frames on playback. And then when it's green, that means you've done all the math ahead of time. Okay, so now check this out. We are looking at this one, and I'm going to take the color saturation, and I'm just going to turn it down on this first one. And we can see here, oops, I didn't have it selected. You can see here that it's a little lower. Come over here, select this one, take saturation. I'm hitting the disclosure triangle, a little less lower. And then at this one, I want this one to be full. Very good. Honestly, I think that's a bit much, so I'm going to come back here. Okay. There we are. Cool. And so that's transitions and color coding. I'm going to hit spacebar down here. And honestly, it's starting to struggle a little bit. My computer is having a hard time playing this back. Okay, so we can see that I've, I've hit my limit. The next thing that I could do if I wanted to play this back is I could come up here to sequence and render the entire sequence if I wanted to, render selection. So I have to deselect something. Now render, render in to out, which is the entire sequence, or render just the audio. But in this case, I think we're done. We're ready. I like what it but it starts kind of quickly. Actually, I'm just going to give it just a little bit of a, a black here in the beginning. Turn snap off. Just so that we have a, have a small moment here to think about what we're looking at. You know what? I think a dip to black is going to be better there. So let's just do it. Dip to black. And I'll make it a little smaller. Sweet. Okay. Last little adjustment here. There's a piece is really never done. You just finally get fed up with it and show it. Because you can edit to infinity. Have different cuts, all that, all that business. So this is good. I'm, I'm happy with this. Now the next step that I need to do is go ahead and send it to export. So I'm going to go ahead and 
uh, click away so that nothing is selected here. I don't have an endpoint, I don't have an out point, just looking at all of my content. And I simply come up here to File and Export. And then Media. This gives me what admittedly will look like too much information. But what we want to do is we want to make an, another MP4. That's the format. We have a bunch of choices here, but another MP4, H.264, is the specific encoding format that you use to create an MP4. By the way, MP4s work for Instagram, they work for Facebook, it's a really great thing. But you can specifically use presets to go towards specific places. And there's presets for Kindles, for Amazons, tablets, Apple TV, iPads, just simple HD stuff, and you'll notice that it gives you the, the specific size and then the frame rate for each one of these things. And if you want to send it to specifically Vimeo or YouTube, we see what these different codecs would be for here. So I'm actually going to set this up so that it can go to YouTube and I'll have this video linked to it as well. And I'm shooting at 1020 because I have 1020 for my height, and that's what that number tends to denote. And so I'm going to call it simple, simpler premiere. And then that MP4 is automatically there. And I go ahead and export it. Q does something else. Uh, for now, we're going to leave that alone. That opens up a whole other program, but you'd have to install it if, it if you tried to click on it. You didn't install Adobe Media Encoder. Nothing's going to happen there. So it doesn't take very long to export all of this stuff because it's only a couple seconds of content. I minimize this, and we now see our content. Just hit spacebar for it. Perfect.